In Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the wizarding world of 1920s America is trying to remain a secret from the non-magic public. A crucial spell at their disposal to help with that is Obliviate, a memory charm that can be used to erase a subject's memories. Gilderoy Lockhart is real good at them. Obliviate! Ah! In Fantastic Beasts, it's used mostly on muggles, or no matches, which is a term that I will never get used to saying. So let's just let's just say muggles from here on out. Deal? Deal. Now here at Nerd Sync, I'm sure you remember that we've talked about memories a lot in the past. It's one of my favorite subjects. We've considered how faulty our memories can be with Batman as an example, and how to implant false memories with Valiant's Bloodshot. But today, I want to discuss whether or not it's possible to purposefully erase specific memories from someone's mind. Spoilers, it is science is scarier than magic. First, a quick refresher on how memories work in case you don't remember. Oh, the jokes are only gonna get worse. Common intuition is that your brain is like a file cabinet or computer hard drive that records all of your memories and stores them for you to recall accurately at a later date. All your memories are there, you just have to remember where to find them. Unfortunately, this is an inaccurate analogy. What's really happening when you recall a memory is that your brain is recreating it, crafting it in your mind with little bits of imagination and updated information from your present context. Remembering physically changes how that memory is wired in your brain, so much so that reminiscing about an old memory could more accurately be described as updating a memory. Because each time you reflect on a past experience, you modify it. The more you dwell on a memory, the less accurate it becomes. I won't spend too much time on this because we have discussed it before in a previous video. I'll put links in the description below and uh, some more stuff at the end. But for this next part, I think we're gonna need a volunteer. How about you? Hey, this mental health is used. You're Yeah, sorry not sorry, scabbers. Decades ago, scientists found a drug called anisomycin that could stop long-term memories from forming. In one experiment, researchers took rats like scabbers here and put them in a rather painful environment. Researchers would play a tone like this and then proceed to give the mice a minor electric shock. Eventually, the mice formed a memory that the tone is associated with pain. Every time they heard it, they would tense up and brace themselves for the inevitable shock. Now here's the interesting part. If you were to take a second mouse and go through the same process of playing the tone and shocking it, but inject it with the drug that stops memories from forming, it will not remember that this sound means pain. Even though they've experienced the tone, then the shock, the tone, then the shock over and over again, the drug prevents the mouse from remembering these experiences. If you play the tone for them later, they act as if it's the first time they've heard it. And while that's all cool and interesting, it's not exactly how Obliviate works. A wizard doesn't follow around a muggle continuously stopping them from forming new memories. It comes after the fact, erasing specific memories after they've already formed. Could that be possible? Scientists aim to test this out by slightly tweaking the experiment. Instead of administering the drug while the mouse was initially creating the memory, what if you gave them the drug while they were remembering an existing memory? Researchers took a mouse who had already formed the memory that this tone means that they're about to be shocked. That association was already etched in their brain. They hear the tone, they freeze up in expectation of pain, but if they are given the drug as the tone is playing, as they are remembering what that tone means, that memory seems to disappear. You play the tone again later and they are no longer afraid of it. They have no memory of what it means. To test this a bit further, scientists later repeated the experiment with two distinct tones to see if they could erase a mouse's memory of just one of them. Sound one was played and the mouse was shocked. Sound two was played and the mouse was also shocked. After the mouse formed memories that each of the tones meant pain, the researchers played the first sound while also administering the drug. Unbelievably, this caused the mouse to forget the memory of the first tone without impacting the memory of the second one. Scientists could use this drug to erase specific memories while keeping other memories intact. This is much closer to how Obliviate works. Just replace drug with spell, and I think you're good to go. If a muggle sees some magic they weren't supposed to, it's probably on the forefront of their mind, and while they're dwelling on it, a wizard can cast the charm to take that specific memory away without making the muggle forget everything else they've ever experienced. Although there have definitely been cases where Obliviate works a little too well and erased larger portions of a victim's memory than was anticipated. Memory is a tricky thing, and humans are a little bit more complex than mice, which is probably why the Ministry of Magic 
Magic employs very specifically trained obliviators to make sure they get it right. Or, you know, just have a giant bird creature rain down magical memory wiping stuff from the sky. Probably good enough for quickly wrapping up a story. Which reminds me, Fantastic Beasts ends on a bit of a sad note. Jacob Kowalski, a muggle who went on this grand adventure into the wizarding world, had his memory of the event erased. But don't be too depressed, because the great irony in how memories work suggests the idea that the most accurate memories are locked away inside the minds of those who can't remember them. If a muggle who was obliviated somehow gained the ability to once again recall the events that were erased from their mind, their memory might actually be more accurate than that of the wizard who took it from them. And that is something to remember. Thank you for indulging me today. I know this wasn't a comic book thing like we normally do, but I wanted to talk about Harry Potter stuff. To all of our American viewers, I hope you are having a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you want to learn more about how memory works, check out this video about whether or not Batman can even remember the death of his parents, or click right here for another video that you might be interested in. My name is Scott, I'm a Ravenclaw, and I will see you in the next video.